Okay, let's talk about relativity and frames of reference. So this is going to be section 6.1 and 6.2. And basically, what is a frame of reference? What's relativity? And basically, a frame of reference is a coordinate system which an observer makes measurements. So, I mean, the classic one I always give, and we'll be doing this in relative to velocity, is if you have a tree here, and if I'm walking towards the tree, two meters per second, and somebody's on a bicycle cycling towards the tree, <clears throat> and I don't know, they're doing five meters per second, the tree relative to the ground, me, and the cyclists are all doing uh, different speeds, and we all see different things. I see standing here I see that, that I'm moving towards the tree and a cyclist is approaching me the cyclist sees that they're approaching the tree and me the me tree sees the cyclist and myself moving towards them so we've got three frames of reference here we can look at the frame of reference of the tree and see what's happening the frame of the reference of me walking or the frame of reference of the cyclist so a frame of reference is basically an observer. What's the observer actually seeing? Okay, so we're also going to talk about inertial frames of reference. We try and do everything, if we can, in an inertial frame of reference. There are also non-inertial, which we'll discuss um, shortly. But the thing about the inertial frame of inertial frame is it has constant velocity. So if I'm walking towards the tree at 2 meters per second, I'm not accelerating, so therefore that's an inertial frame. If that cyclist is doing 5 meters per second, that's also an inertial frame. Now that tree is not moving anywhere, it's not accelerating. So that's also an inertial frame. So basically, constant velocity means no acceleration. And that's the big thing. If there is no acceleration, then it's an inertial frame. If there is any acceleration going on, then we have to take things and uh, take into account relativity and to other terms, which we will do in the rest of the section. Okay? And... The other thing is the Newton's laws, Newton's laws of motion and gravity, acceleration and gravity still work, are valid. So, that would be an inertial frame. So, so we can also take a Galilean principle, which Galileo first proposed, which is basically the laws of mechanics are the same in all inertial frames of reference. And we haven't found that to be wrong. So in theory, if we do have an initial frame in well, Hamilton, and we do an experiment there, I drop drop something. And I, if I have an initial frame in Paris, and I drop something, then we should get the same result. Let's um, let's just try and do an example. Example six point one, which is in the notes, which. And what that says, motion of ball dropped in a van travelling at constant speed. So draw a picture. We have a van. And if that ball is travelling, if that van is travelling at a constant speed or velocity, uh, basically what happens here, if I drop the ball, I have a ball, and I drop it, this is me in red, what I see is I see the ball drop, dun, 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 straight down. But because the van is moving, if you have somebody here, what they see is the ball as it drops. Because the van is moving, they see the ball do that. Because that's a different observer, they're in a different frame of reference than me. Me, I look at it and see a ball just dropping straight down. This person sees a ball arcing in a perfect parabola. But in both cases, the laws, Newton's laws, are held true. 
were valid. So this ball has the same mass and energy for both observers. So let's do relative velocity. I was already doing a bit with that example with the tree. So let's talk about, yeah, let's do this example again. So I've got my tree. And I'm doing two meters per second. And the cyclist uh, is doing five meters per second. Now the question is, let's just, we're going to say that earth is on the, that tree is on the ground. So what we're going to call that is, we'll call that a ground system. How fast am I going towards the tree? Well if the tree's got zero velocity, so velocity between oh, me, me and tree equals two meters per second. How about for the velocity between the cyclist? The cyclist and the tree is going to equal five meters per second. But how fast is the cyclist going relative to me? So velocity, cyclist, me, it's going to be, well, it's going to be five meters per second minus the two meters per second is equal to, so the cyclist is going three meters a second faster than I am. Hopefully you can see this from your own personal experience. And this is actually quite important. I mean, if anybody remember Scott Dixon, he used to race IndyCar, he probably still does race IndyCars over in Indianapolis 500, and they'll do speeds like 350 kilometers per hour. So they've got a racetrack, they're in their cars, there's Scott, boom, let's crash on it, there's another car, and somebody was saying, do you know how fast you're going? Because they're doing 350 kilometers per hour plus he says, no, I mean, all you're doing, you don't know how fast you're going until you hit the wall. Because he's comparing his speed to this driver. So Scott might be just doing one, two kilometers per hour faster than that one, 351. But compared to the wall, both those cars are going really fast. Compared to each other, they're just sort of doing this. Compared to the wall, they're going, whoosh. So anyway, let's try a couple of examples. So let's actually set this up formally. This is section 6.2. So we're going to set up velocity of the object relative to the ground. So we're going to set up some terms. VOG, object, ground. Okay, velocity, object, moving system. Uh, what's that? Yeah. Okay object moving and velocity what's that one sg moving ground which is basically just a very complicated way of saying what i was saying here so let's try 6.1 uh, so and we can work out for the standard galilean transform a uh, transform the velocity of the observer relative to the ground. So if I'm on the back of a truck, so this is me on a truck, this is this is S, the moving system. This is the tree is going to represent the ground. And I'm going to be the object. So I might be I drop a ball or something like that. So or I'm walking forward. So if I'm walking forward on a train or something like that. So what this says is the velocity of me relative to the ground is going to equal the velocity of the train or the truck or whatever relative to the ground plus whatever speed I'm walking forward. Plus the um, object so what this says is if I'm on a train, and the train's moving forward, my total velocity towards that tree is equal to my velocity relative to the train, plus how fast is that train going? So I add my speed to the train speed, boom, that gives you total speed. 
for some reason we love trains when we're doing these examples. Um, okay, so let's try exercise 6.1. Okay, I bought a van moves at 3 meters per second due east. So we've got a van. It's doing 3 meters per second east. Remember, north, south, east, west. And there's a stationary observer, so over here, relative to that. And somebody rolls a ball along the floor of that at 2 meters per second. How fast is the ball going relative to me? So in this case, we can say velocity of the object to the ground is equal to the velocity of this movie of the van plus the ground plus the velocity of the ball relative to the van, which is going to equal, well, the van's doing 3 meters per second, and the ball relative to the van is doing 2 plus 2 meters per second. So equals 5 meters per second. So that ball is actually headed towards me at 5 meters per second. Isn't that cool? Okay, but what, about, what happens if the person rolls the ball the other way? So we've got, let's do 6.2. So we've got the same thing. We've got a van. We've got me. I'm not going anywhere, so I'll put an earth sign in. And so the van's doing five, uh, now the van's doing two meters per second. And somebody rolls that ball backwards at two meters per second. How fast is that, how fast is that actually going, to, that ball traveling relative to me? So again, we go VOG the velocity of the object, in this case of the ball, relative to me, equals the velocity of the van, relative to me, plus the velocity of the object, relative to me. Now what we have to here, take into account here is the van, so I'm going to set this up, this is going to be positive, positive is going to be that way, and up. So the van is headed towards me at 2 meters per second. Plus, and then I add on the speed of the ball, but the ball's going the other way. So that's going to be plus negative 2 meters per second because that ball is going that way. So the actual velocity of the object, of the ball relative to me is 0 meters per second. 2 plus negative 2 is 0. So if I was on a train, for example, or if I was standing here, the ball would appear not to move. Everything else would, but the ball would appear to be in the same spot. Okay, what about now? Let's take a harder example. Example 6.3. I probably should have done this before I uh, went this through. Repeat the example. So we've now got the van. I'm going to do a top map for you with the van. This is the top view. And the van is moving 3 metres per second that way. Due east. And the ball is rolled 2 metres per second to the side of the van. 2 metres per second that way. And if this is me standing here, I'm an observer, how fast is it going now, and it's the same thing, VOG equals VSG plus VOS, let's just remind ourselves what this means, so the velocity of the object, the ball, relative to me, is equal to the velocity of the van, the moving system, the van, relative to me, plus the velocity of the object, relative to me. So how do we do this? And the thing you have to remember in this case is velocity is a vector. So what we actually have is we add them up. We go 3 meters per second. Remember we use the dog greeting method of adding vectors. 2 meters per second 
these are set up at right angles the resultant ball is actually going to travel that velocity relative to me so to find out the magnitude so how do we work out the magnitude we use Pythagoras V O G equals root of 3 squared plus 2 squared equals root 13 which is equal to root 13 equals 3.606 meters per second so the ball's traveling 3.606 meters per second and then we have to find out the angle which in this case we're going to use tan tan uh, tan theta equals tan inverse of opposite over adjacent which equals tan inverse of 3 over 2 3 meters per second over 2 meters per second <coughs> equals tan inverse uh, da, 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 da. tan inverse come on clear tan inverse 1.5 uh, 1 equals 56 well, okay wrong way around two meters opposite is two three that looks better tan inverse of 0.6666 equals 33.69 degrees so that angle in there is 36 point Six, nine degrees. We don't know if it's going that way or that way, but we know it's going to pass me on one side or the other. So remember, velocity is a vector, so we'd still add them just like any other vector.